If you are sick of emails and various other distractions like I am, and you want to be as productive as possible with the time that you have, stick with me. I think this video might just be a game changer. You see, uh, Cal Newport is becoming something of a productivity superstar. And if you haven't heard of him, he's written a number of books, uh, but two in particular that have been uh, just gold in my life personally. Uh, Deep Work, the subtitle is Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World and Digital Minimalism, which says choosing a focused life in a noisy world. Because they made such an impact on me, I was pretty excited to get my hands on uh, Newport's latest book, A World Without Email, Reimagining Work in an Age of Communication Overload. Frankly, it, it doesn't disappoint. In the next few minutes, I want to blast through some key ideas from that book so that even if you don't read the book, you can get some benefit from it. But I do want to say this. Please, please, please do pick up this book if you get a chance. There's just so much good stuff in there. And the intention of this video is, is not to steal Newport's work, but rather to point you to it because it's just that good. So uh, this is a summary for sure, but ultimately it's really just a taster of what this great book has in store. So with that in mind, let's take a look. Newport begins A World Without Email by introducing us to a concept he calls the hyperactive hive mind. And, and this is essentially what the entire book builds on. Uh, the hyperactive hive mind is uh, a workflow centered around ongoing conversation fueled by unstructured and unscheduled messages delivered through digital communication tools like email and instant messenger services. In other words, he's describing the state that most of us work in, which is constantly being bombarded by emails and instant messenger tools like Slack that draw us away from our ability to focus on uh, deep work. And, and that's a problem, obviously, it's bad. Newport cites one study estimating that by 2019, the average worker was sending and receiving 126 emails per day, which works out to one message every four minutes. And later on, he writes, to say that we check email too often is an understatement. The reality is that we're using these tools constantly. So rather than being a saving revolutionary invention or a technological marvel that's made the world a better place, what Newport wonders is if email has had such a negative impact on our productivity that it's actually slowed economic growth globally in the last two decades. That's huge. Uh, this hyperactive hive mind workflow is a real problem. And let's be honest, if uh, you're like me, you've likely experienced it too, because worryingly, it's the standard communicational strategy in most organizations, probably in your organization too. And after drawing attention to the challenges of the hyperactive hive mind, Newport then separates his book into two parts. In the first, he makes a case against email. And then in the second, he offers some principles for living in an emailless world. So Let's talk about part one. So in part one, the chapter headings really speak for themselves. Email reduces productivity, email makes us miserable, and email has a mind of its own. But of course, within those chapters, there is a whole lot of content. For example, Newport highlights the fact that we often confuse email with actual work, which is so true. I've certainly been guilty of thinking that I'm getting a whole bunch of things done by responding to emails, but often I'm just missing out on the actual deep work that my organization needs me to complete. You know, in chapter two, Newport describes an experiment by uh, Leslie Perlow, who's a Harvard Business School professor, who found that uh, predictable time off from email actually increased the percentage of employees who wanted to stay at the firm for the long term, uh, from 50% to 58%. I think that's crazy that something as small as email could make such a big difference, don't you? Uh, Newport then questions the ability of the hyperactive hive mind workflow to gel with what he calls immensely complex and finely tuned social circuits that actually help us to work together so well and have helped us in the past. In other words, this way of working jars with our natural predispositions, and that's a huge problem. The frenetic, always on nature of email means that we're facing this deluge of communication that we never feel like we can keep up with, which frankly is making us unhappy. 
rather than working as this like productivity silver bullet, email has caused this whole bunch of new problems. And Newport talks about Perlow again in chapter three, describing what she calls the cycle of responsiveness. Listen to this, because this is super interesting. The cycle of responsiveness begins with uh, a genuine demand on your time. And suddenly you realize that Actually, you can respond anytime. So you just knock out a few emails to a few clients and a few teammates. And then they realize that you're available at those new times. And so then they email you even more and they expect an even faster response. And suddenly you're stuck in this cycle that you really don't want to be in, inundated with expectations that you can't possibly meet. The important lesson from Perlow's work, writes Newport, is the haphazard and unplanned manner in which an entirely new way of communicating emerged. Or maybe to put it another way, we just kind of fell into a way of working that, well, isn't really working. So email is clearly a problem. We recognize that. And we want to make the best use of our time. So how on earth do we do that? Well, in part two, Newport offers some solutions, actually. And uh, in each subsequent chapter, he describes uh, various principles, the attention capital principle, the process principle, the, the protocol principle, and the specialization principle. So let's talk about each one of those uh, really quickly. The attention capital principle is all about how we can better optimize our brain's ability to uh, sustainably add value to information. When we're constantly switching between tasks, feeling super busy and stretched the whole time, our ability to add value to information is severely hindered. And this obviously isn't a good thing. Newport's suggestion is to minimize what he calls mid-task context switches. So maybe by using a board system like Asana or Trello or Notion or an app I've been absolutely loving recently is called ClickUp, uh, so that you are focusing on on one thing at a time. These really help us there. And he also suggests minimizing the sense of communication overload, or again, to put it another way, making sure we switch off from our work when we're not working. This will make a big difference. Um, But obviously, uh, Newport's clear as well that we still need to measure the quality and the quantity of the output that we're producing. Otherwise, it's not really as helpful. So that's the attention capital principle. The process principle says that introducing smart production processes to knowledge work can dramatically increase performance and make the work much less draining. So in other words, uh, implementing processes that dictate how we work and not just what we work on can make a really big difference. Again, In order to do this, Newport recommends using task boards. And I will talk more in detail about task boards in another video one day if you've never heard of them or if you want to go deeper. But for now, uh, Newport offers several best practices for personal task boards. He says, one, use a separate board for different roles in your professional life. Two, regularly schedule time to review your board. Three, add a to to discuss column. And four, add a waiting to hear back column. Those things are are really helpful. And also the fantastic thing about digital boards is that you can see uh, only the stuff that relates directly to your task, which helps keep you from unnecessary context switching, which is an absolute productivity killer. We know that, right? The protocol principle uh, recognizes that uh, designing rules that optimize when and how coordination occurs in the workplace is a pain in the short term, but it can result in significantly more productive operation in the long term. So the attention capital principle says that, hey, we need to minimize context switching and maximize our brain's ability to add value. The process principle says, yeah, smart production processes Uh, or how you work is really important. And the protocol principle says that actually, although there's a time cost up front, taking the time to plan those processes um, properly and well can dramatically improve your workflow in the long term. So Newport shares some examples of people who maybe stick to writing emails fewer than five sentences at all times and others who meet maybe for 15 minutes every day or uh, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday for a scrum or a status meeting, whatever you you want to call it. The point really is uh, that communication happens uh, at a productive and non-disruptive time that doesn't pull you from your work. And that can only be a good thing, right? Finally, Newport introduces us to the specialization principle, which he says is the idea that less 
can be more. You know, so often we end up being uh, non-specialists who have so many obligations that we can't possibly keep up. Instead, according to the author, by reducing the number of different obligations you're required to tackle, you'll gain the breathing room needed to then optimize the workflows uh, you deploy to handle what remains, creating this one-two punch of productivity gains that can completely transform your effectiveness or that of your organization. He offers up two tips to do this. One, outsource what you don't do well. And two, trade accountability for autonomy. So that is a brief overview of a world without email. What do we do with that? Well, for me, the biggest thing is recognizing the need to massively limit context switching. I'm really terrible for checking my emails midway through a, a really important task that should really involve 100% concentration. If you've been following this channel for a while, you might have seen that uh, I've been using Notion as a task manager for a while, and I've decided, uh, like I said a bit earlier, to move to ClickUp instead. I'm pretty excited about that, and I have a few videos planned actually to talk about ClickUp because I think it's an awesome piece of kit. I'm also a lot more conscious of the emails I'm sending to my colleagues, and uh, I have time set aside each day for undistracted, unreachable, deep work, which has already really helped me get things done in a much more productive way. Overall, I would say this book has been incredibly helpful. Is it the same caliber as deep work in digital minimalism? Well, I'd say probably not. Uh, to be fair, those books set the bar extraordinarily high, like outrageously high. And again, I want to recommend that you read this book for yourself as there is just so much good stuff in here. And if, if I could offer one criticism to keep in mind, uh, the reason I would only give it maybe four stars and not five stars is that it's a little bit bloated in a few spots. There are a couple of areas where I wondered what on earth the point of that story was or this historical fact. And then when I eventually found out, I wasn't totally convinced that it was a necessary addition. It felt like bloat to me, but I'm really just splitting hairs here. It's, it's definitely a four star minimum, maybe even a four and a half star book. And I think it's worth reading as much as uh, I'm jumping into fanboy territory. I would, I would just highly recommend anything that Cal Newport reads, uh, writes, I should say it's really good stuff. So that's it from me. Uh, I read a lot of books and I would love to make more uh, productivity and book review videos in the future if that's something that you're interested in. So you have to let me know. I would like to know if that's something you'd be interested in. So if that sounds interesting, remember, click the like button, the subscribe button. Please leave a comment letting me know that you'd like to see more videos like this. That would be a huge encouragement for a small YouTuber like me. And uh, it really helps me to make sure that I'm producing videos that serve you well, whatever that looks like, right? So wherever you are in the world, and whatever it is that you're doing, have an incredible day, and I will see you very soon. Bye.